Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, distinguished members, I am honored to speak in this chamber, and I am committed to renewing the alliance between our nations and the friendship between our people. This is my first trip overseas as President of the United States. I've been to the G20 summit in London, and the NATO summit in Strasbourg, and the European Union summit in Prague. Some people have asked me if I chose to continue my travels to Ankara and Istanbul to send a message to the world. And my answer is simple. Evet, yes. <laughs> Turkey is a critical ally. Turkey is an important part of Europe. And Turkey and the United States must stand together and work together to overcome the challenges of our time. You know, this morning, I had the great privilege of visiting the tomb of your extraordinary founder of your republic. And I was deeply impressed by this beautiful memorial to a man who did so much to shape the course of history. But it is also clear that the greatest monument to Ataturk's life is not something that can be cast in stone and marble. His greatest legacy is Turkey's strong, vibrant, secular democracy. And that is the work that this assembly carries on today. Now, this future was not easily assured. It was not guaranteed. At the end of World War I, Turkey could have succumbed to the foreign powers that were trying to claim its territory or sought to restore an ancient empire. But Turkey chose a different future. You freed yourself from foreign control and you founded a republic that commands the respect of the United States and the wider world. And there is a simple truth to this story. Turkey's democracy is your own achievement. It was not forced upon you by any outside power, nor did it come without struggle and sacrifice. Turkey draws strength from both the successes of the past and from the efforts of each generation of Turks that makes new progress for your people. Now, my country's democracy has its own story. The general who led America in revolution and governed as our first president was, as many of you know, George Washington. And like you, we built a grand monument to honor our founding father, a towering obelisk that stands in the heart of the capital city that bears Washington's name. I can see the Washington Monument from the window of the White House every day. It took decades to build. There were frequent delays. Over time, more and more people contributed to help make this monument the inspiring structure that still stands tall today. Among those who came to our aid were friends from all across the world who offered their own tributes to Washington and the country he helped to found. And one of those tributes came from Istanbul. Ottoman Sultan Abu Majid sent a marble plaque that helped to build the Washington Monument. Inscribed in the plaque was a poem that began with a few simple words, so as to strengthen the friendship between the two countries. Over 150 years have passed since those words were carved into marble. Our nations have changed in many ways, but our friendship is strong and our alliance endures. It is a friendship that flourished in the years after World War II, when President Truman committed our nation to the defense of Turkey's freedom and sovereignty, and Turkey committed itself into the NATO alliance. Turkish troops have served by our side from Korea to Kosovo to Kabul. Together, we've withstood the great test of the Cold War. 
trade between our nations has steadily advanced. So has cooperation in science and research. The ties among our people have deepened as well, and more and more Americans of Turkish origin live and work and succeed within our borders. And as a basketball fan, I've even noticed that Hedo Turgalu and Mehmet Okur have got some pretty good basketball games. So, the United States and Turkey have not always agreed on every issue. And that's to be expected. No two nations do. But we have stood together through many challenges over the last 60 years. And because of the strength of our alliance and the endurance of our friendship, both America and Turkey are stronger and the world is more secure. Now, our two democracies are confronted by an unprecedented set of challenges, an economic crisis that recognizes no borders, extremism that leads to the killing of innocent men and women and children, strains on our energy supply and a changing climate, the proliferation of the world's deadliest weapons, and the persistence of tragic conflict. These are the great tests of our young century. And the choices that we make in the coming years will determine whether the future will be shaped by fear or by freedom, by poverty or by prosperity, by strife or by a just, secure, and lasting peace. This much is certain. No one nation can confront these challenges alone. And all nations have a stake in overcoming them. That is why we must listen to one another and seek common ground. That is why we must build on our mutual interests and rise above our differences. We are stronger when we act together. That is the message that I have carried with me throughout this trip to Europe. That is the message that I delivered when I had the privilege of meeting with your President and with your Prime Minister. That will be the approach of the United States of America going forward. Already, America and Turkey are working with the G20 on an unprecedented response to an unprecedented economic crisis. Now, this past week, we came together to ensure that the world's largest economies take strong and coordinated action to stimulate growth and restore, uh, restore the flow of credit, to reject the pressures of protectionism, and to extend a hand to developing countries and the people hit hardest by this downturn, and to dramatically reform our regulatory system so that the world never faces a crisis like this again. As we go forward, the United States and Turkey can pursue many opportunities to serve prosperity for our people. The President and I this morning talked about expanding the ties of commerce and trade. There is enormous opportunity when it comes to energy to create jobs, and we can increase new sources to not only free ourselves from dependence of other, energies, uh, other countries' energy sources, but also to combat climate change. We should build on our Clean Technology Fund to leverage efficiency and renewable energy investments in Turkey. And to power markets in Turkey and Europe, the United States will continue to support your central role as an east-west corridor for oil and natural gas. Now, this economic cooperation only reinforces the common security that Europe and the United States share with Turkey as a NATO ally and the common values that we share as democracies. So in meeting the challenges of the 21st century, we must seek the strength of a Europe that is truly united, peaceful, and free. So let me be clear. The United States strongly supports Turkey's bid to become a member of the European Union. We speak, we speak not as members of the EU, but as close friends of both Turkey and Europe. Turkey has been a resolute ally and a responsible partner in transatlantic and European institutions. Turkey is bound to Europe by more than the bridges over the bus for us. Centuries of shared history, culture, and commerce bring you together. 
Europe gains by the diversity of ethnicity, tradition, and faith. It is not diminished by it. And Turkish membership would broaden and strengthen Europe's foundation once more. Now, of course, Turkey has its own responsibilities. And you've made important progress towards membership. But I also know that Turkey has pursued difficult political reforms, not simply because it's good for EU membership, but because it's right for Turkey. In the last several years, you've abolished state security courts. You've expanded the right to counsel. You've reformed the penal code and strengthened laws that govern the freedom of the press and assembly. You've lifted bans on teaching and broadcasting Kurdish. And the world noted with respect the important signal sent through a new state Kurdish television station. 